All right, y'all, we are back with another video. This one right here is coming from Benny. He said that Don Jr., Donald Trump's son, drops vice presidential bombshell of 2024 and reveals his pick. See, this is where you got to be kind of uh, careful because, you know, Donald Trump and his family, they very good at, like, not telling you who they going to pick. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Trump, he knows how to talk his way around a certain question because he don't want to, you know, tell us who his VP pick is. But we're going to listen to Don Jr. drop the VP bombshell. And you got to pay attention to this because he probably is going to reveal who Donald Trump pick is going to be. But he got to act like it's his pick. So sometimes you got to read in between the lines to see exactly what's going on. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I feel like that's what he's going to do. So I definitely want to check this out because uh, Ben said this right here is a bombshell. So, like I said, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, shout out to everybody showing so much support. Everybody been leaving positive comments in the comment section. I also want to thank everybody who clicked on the video for the very first time. I appreciate all of you, especially the one that always watches the entire video and hit that like button as you're coming in so you two can share it and more people will see my reaction. Without further ado, yo, let's go ahead and dive straight into this because I want to see who Don Jr., wants uh his dad donald trump vice president pick to be even though i feel like this probably gonna be donald trump's pick but he gonna try to switch and say that's his pick i read between the lines so without further ado y'all let's go here's the rock complimenting a, a footage of you because you were walking out with your father madison ah. square garden talker kid rock yeah. you and they played the clip on screen and the rock's like the rock's like hot damn I love that, man. Like, I love that family. Trump goes big. I got to get your response to this. Maybe some of our viewers haven't seen it. An unbelievable moment in the timeline where The Rock straight up praises the Trump family. Don Jr. in this clip. Let's go. And the wrestler. Uh, Donald Trump, he has a long history with WWE. What does it mean that both the WWE audience and the UFC audience seem to have such an appreciation or celebration of Donald Trump? Red states, we sell out. Blue states, we sell out. It's not what we're focused on. What we're focused on the, is the in-ring product and how it delivers to the fans. And if politicians are fans of our product, they're welcome. You got The Rock. You want Donald Trump back in the ring at WWE? Listen, <laughs> I mean, Rock against Donald Trump, I don't know how well that would work out in the ring for Donald Trump. <laughs> how, how, about, how about that ovation he gets, though, when he comes out? I know President Donald Trump taking his octagon side seat for UFC. Oh, big, big ovation. Trump, yeah, yeah, no question. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's incredible. A lot of friends who've achieved... Okay, so what's yeah. your what do you what say you to the Rock as well, he no, as he compliments I, you and your dad? I I agree with him. Like by the way, you <laughs> I, I've gone yeah, listen. I've been I, I think I was at UFC two. Like I you know I, I was there one one of the fights. Tank Abbott was saving a seat for his girlfriend by leaving his dentures on the seat next to me. Wow. Uh, you know, like that was that was the placeholder. Like we've been on there and we've been fans for for a long time. And you know I went out to the original Madison Square Garden back. It was Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz fight like two, three years ago when my father was still president. And, you know, the media was like, oh, uh, yeah, some guy's like screaming in his phone, like, boo. And it, it literally the other 25,000 people in attendance, it went wild. Dana goes to me and he goes, I've never seen anything like it. That was incredible. He's like, we're in New York. Miami was like, I mean, just insane. And he, like now even they, even they couldn't pretend like there was something negative. It, those are people that get it. It was, it was interesting because I watched the demographic of sort of the fight community. You know, these are guys... Even the ones that you think are haters, like, they, they text me. They're friends. They're like, they go back and forth. They may play a game, but, you know, you're getting in a ring and you're an individual. You're the guy. There's no blaming other people. There's it. You're one-on-one -on -one with your opponent. And that stands so much in line with our conservative values and so much of the things that we actually believe in. That, that whole community and, frankly, all of the people that watch it, for the most part, you know, are going to be conservatives. They also are smart enough to get it and understand what's actually happening. You know, The Rock now sitting on the board of both WWE and UFC, the sort of the combined entities, like mm. he understands that's the fight they face. That's the fan. And this is someone that they were, you know, trying to recruit to possibly run, you know, as a Democrat against Trump because they also realized Joe Biden, this was happening last year. Uh, so, you know, it, it's great to have that acknowledgement. But more importantly, honestly, it's great just to have, the honesty about the situation, as opposed to, you know, mm. the New York Times runs with the clip of the one guy booing into his phone, despite the fact that, like, even Dana White, who's done this, you know, a few hundred times, it's going to be UFC 300 in a couple of weeks, like, you know, say that's the biggest thing I've ever seen, you know, in, in a walkout. 
And yet they'll run it as though he was booed because one guy's yelling in his stream. And that's the one that they'll pick up because there's no intellectual honesty anymore in the media. It's okay. why they have basically uh, almost less credibility than Congress. They're not doing they're not doing journalism, right? They're they're doing activism. And there's a difference. It's gotten so ridiculous that people understand that one, too. So all of these institutions, they're not doing themselves any favors because they're making themselves irrelevant because they've eroded their credibility so badly over the last few years that there's really none left. So there's room for the rock and the MAGA movement. Oh, yeah. Listen, we're, we're, we are, honestly, unlike the Democrats, we're actually, uh, you know, a big wide open tent. You know, if you go against the Democrat policy, even a little bit, if you disagree with them on one thing, you, how, how often do they eat their own? We are more than willing to have these conversations. We are more than willing to bring in people, every race, gender, ethnicity, whatever it may okay. be, you know, on an equal footing to have these conversations. It's only the Democrats that are the ones that will cancel you. They're the ones that have been playing the cancel culture card forever. They're the ones that if they disagree with what you can be the greatest leader of one of their movements. If you go out of lockstep with what they're doing, I, I always use Martina Navratilova as sort of the example. You know, this was a, one of the most accomplished female tennis players in the world ever. Uh, she knew, knew our family growing up. She's since became a Trump hater because she's a super Democrat. Uh, she's obviously a lesbian and she championed, uh, you know, the LBG, at least LBG before there was ever even a T movement for 35 years. Which The only problem is, is like when they come to The Rock, why he's saying that they don't mind if The Rock want to come to their side. But the problem is, is that The Rock do a lot of flip flopping. So a lot of people is not going to trust the Rock to be on Donald Trump's side because for one minute he's with Joe Biden and the next minute he talking about he for Trump. So a lot of people is like the Rock is a fraud when they come to this. This is what a lot of people be saying. I see it all in the comment section. Anytime I hear anything about the Rock, uh, trying to shout out Trump or act like he for Trump, people are like we don't not want the Rock because he's a flip flopper. Let him stay where he at. Because in one minute he liked it, Joe Biden, and then he's trying to come over here to Donald Trump. He kind of just going back and forth. So a lot of people just don't trust The Rock. But uh, let's keep it going because I want to see exactly who this VP pick going to be. Just about 30 years prior to it being cool, to it making you like beyond reproach. Because the now with the T component, now that's the most privileged class in probably world society, but certainly in American society. You, you can do no wrong if you're the T. And she said, I, I don't know, as one of, as a, lesbian advocate for that movement and everything she said i don't think you know trans people should be playing against women and men who are born biologically have advantages and i don't think they should play against women in tennis or other sports and the, the trans mafia goes after her and basically cancels her so 35 years of staunch activism before it was cool when there was still so, a social consequence against not for that just gone that history, that yeah. timeline, it's like it didn't exist. If you took on the trans mafia, you were out. Uh, and, you know, people are understanding that. They they see the hypocrisy of today's left, and they're realizing it's oh, nonsense. Yeah. Just like the same people who are screaming about fascism for the last seven years are acting awfully a lot like fascists. They are locking up their political opposition. They are trying to jail them. They are canceling them. They are silencing them. Uh, you know. I understand, you know, I'm not the upstanding human being that Hunter Biden is, but I feel like I've probably been treated <laughs> slightly differently given, uh, given, uh, you know, well, what he actually did versus what I allegedly did that they wanted to try me for treason, a crime punishable by death. I take that one a little bit personally for obvious reasons, but like they, you know, they keep using this word fascism. And I'm like, I don't think you understand what it actually means because you're acting awfully a lot like those uh, you're, you're, you're claiming are fascist. So you say you like UFC because it's one on one, right? One person versus another person. Yet you say that Joe Biden will not face off against your father, and Kamala Harris won't even debate. So in the VP yeah, debate, there's zero chance who, they, they wouldn't do it. Like it, VP debate, him. Who, he who do you the want? Stage. Who he would you want though, Don? Want, who would you oh, want though, Don? Representing the ticket VP? as VP. Oh. Yes. Well, all right. This is selfish. Well, I think he'd be great across the board, but. Tucker Carlson, because all I want for Christmas is the Tucker Carlson, <laughs> Kamala Harris vice presidential <laughs> debate. You know, when like literally that's. But like I said, I think he'd act, I, like he's a he's a very personal friend. Like I, you know, I, like I, I like uh, agree with him on virtually everything policy wise. It's one of the few people that I actually don't have many disagreements. And when we talk, I'm like uh, we're we're very simpatico, you know, politically, but. My, my selfish motivation, there's others that could be great. I love a J.D. Vance, and there's, you know, there's a few other guys that would be great. I just want to see 
that debate. That's that's all I need from uh, you know from uh, Tucker Carlson as vice president. Although I think he'd be amazing uh, across the board. Wow, there you go. He even named JD Vance and some more. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you know at least Stefanik. Uh, we still got Vivek. Mar- uh, I don't know if Marjorie Taylor Green will be in the running or do she want to be in the running, but she'll be an off an awesome pick as well. But if you look at it, he's saying Tucker Carson. If you remember when Donald Trump said something about Mandy, he'll like Tucker Carson. Now, a lot of you have to read between the lines. This is Donald Trump's son. This is Don Jr. So obviously, I'm pretty much knowing that he knows who his dad of VP pick is going to be, which he ain't going to come out and say it. But he's like, if it's me, you know, uh, Tucker Carson, because that's who I picked. I said Tucker Carson as well. I said I name other people if he don't pick Tucker Carson, but I want it to be Tucker Carson. So y'all have to read in between the lines sometimes because he probably accidentally just told us who his dad, who uh, Donald Trump's VP pick is going to be. So I know a lot of people going to be like, uh, he didn't say that was his dad's VP pick. Sometimes you got to read in between the lines. So you got to read in between the lines sometime and just see. That's why Benny was just, was looking like that. Even Benny said that he would, he would want Tucker. But we don't know yet. We shall see. But I believe uh, I believe it's, it, it could be Tucker, man. If Tucker still want to do it, we still got Vivek out there, J.D. Vance, Tim Scott, Elise Stefanik. It's a lot of them. So uh, we should see. But like I said, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.